Well, welcome back to the Arthritis Broadcast Network um, Speakers Corner. Uh, I'm Cheryl Cohen. I'm the founder and president of Arthritis Consumer Experts, Canada's largest, longest running, which means I'm old and everybody else with us is old, getting older, but um, 17,000 members across the country. We're really happy to be here uh, with you at the Canadian Rheumatology Association meeting, and we're super happy to have someone um, that we know well and have uh, worked with over the last 18 years, um, delivering uh, information and really pulling all of this science out of her brain is Dr. Lori Tucker. Um, Dr. Tucker is a professor um, in the Department of Pediatrics uh, at uh, University of British Columbia, and she has so much experience to share with us, not just from uh, obviously a pediatric rheumatology perspective, um, but someone who has done, like, toiled away, doing really both grassroots but high-level research, I think, in your community, and not just in Vancouver, coast to coast. So thank you for joining us, um, Lori. We really appreciate you taking time away from what we know is a busy schedule. Tell our audience who you are. What do you do every day? So I am a pediatric rheumatologist, and so what I do every day is I see children with variety of rheumatic diseases, arthritis, uh, lupus, vasculitis, dermatomyositis, autoinflammatory diseases, together with their parents, uh, mostly at the BC Children's Hospital in Vancouver. Um, we do do some outreach clinics in other parts of the province, um, so I mostly take care of patients. Uh, but I also uh, teach students and residents um, and I do a fair amount of research, uh, all together at the same time as taking care of patients. So patients actually are part of these research projects. Yeah, yeah. they but really they, are. But they're not, they're not all of your patient load would be in these projects? No. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. just where it suits them and where they like to yeah. be involved. Yeah. Um, what would you say, how, this is just a crazy question and I'm interested to see if you know the answer. How many kids do you think you've taken care of in your career? Wow, that's a really, that's an amazing that, I question. I know, I know. Um, you know, it's it's way more than hundreds. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably up towards thousand or so, like, yeah. you know. What's the, with that huge service you've done for those, that community of kids, Lori, what do you think is the, sort of the strongest commonality amongst kids with arthritis? Like, what is it that, oh... You know, is there um, is there something that is a commonality across kids? I I think there is something special um, about kids who get a chronic disease like arthritis yeah. um, when they're young, yeah. because I think that you know all of us who are parents we try to promote resilience and growth in our in our kids, but I think kids with arthritis develop a certain kind of resilience. And a certain kind of uh, acceptance and ability to be kind and accepting of other people um, that is a little bit different. Yeah. A little bit different. So kind of they get wise beyond their years. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think that's true. And you learn very quickly probably in life because they don't want it done to themselves not to judge a book by its cover. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, being sort of tolerant. And, yeah. But really, um, I think this inner strength um, is really something I've seen um, in kids who've been in really difficult circumstances. Yes. I mean, I can give you a small example. Sure. A uh, young man came to, we also do a young adult clinic in yeah. Vancouver, as you know, and so we see kids between 18 and 22 who've had rheumatic diseases. Some of them still have active disease. We saw a young man um, who had, who's now 21. He had very severe juvenile dermatomyositis yeah. involving his muscles, um, to the extent where, as a teenager, he spent four months in the intensive oh. care unit, and he was unable to speak because he was so weak. Um, but this young man is just, uh, he's now well, he is strong, he's attending university, um, he has a plan. But what's really remarkable is, what's his plan? He told us that, I'm not really that interested in making a lot of money, he said. He said, I want to be a teacher because I feel like I need to help other kids. Now, to me, that's the example. That's, that's what, resilience. That's what it does. Word of the day, fans, friends, followers, viewers, 
Resilience. Yeah. I love that. And you know, I, I couldn't agree more. I certainly don't have the, the professional responsibility that you have with kids, but I do get to interact with them with yeah. arthritis. And I would agree with you. There's just pull up your bootstraps. Not every kid's able to do that, not right at first, but with the right support system, the right care. Um, the right parenting, actually, yep. um, can make that resilience yep. happen. Well, I think um, that's a, a big part of what pediatric rheumatology team care okay. is meant to do. Okay. So in pediatric rheumatology, uh, no matter where you live in Canada, yep. uh, and pro most places in the U.S. as well and in Europe, uh, we practice as a team. Right. And that means that on our team, uh, in addition to the kid and parent, yep. <laughs> and the doctor, uh, we have usually, we have a nurse, uh, we have a physiotherapist, we have an occupational therapist, we have a social worker. In wow. some instances, there might be a psychologist. So that child and that family um, has the benefit uh, during the times when it's frightening, yeah. uh, it's difficult. Uh, they have the benefit of a variety of health professionals who can uh, really come together to help support them. And also to say, you know, there are people who've been here before, yeah. and they, you know, this will, you know, you will get better, you will survive. It takes a village. Yeah. It takes a village. You know, it sounds to me like that's a part of a model of care. Oh, and yeah. so, I don't know, I'm testing that with you. I think that's right. That's correct. What, tell our viewers, Lori, what is a model of care for a child with arthritis? What does model of care mean? And particularly in a pediatric setting, because I think there's probably some differences. Uh, there's some major differences. Yeah. And I think really the primary one is what I mentioned. I mean, I think um, we've talked about this as a group, as pediatric rheumatologists in Canada. Yeah. Um, and so there are certain principles around care for kids with arthritis. Right. The primary principle that we all aspire to is that every child with arthritis should have the opportunity to be cared for by a pediatric rheumatology yeah. um, team. Because it's a and different disease in children. It's really children. different. Yeah. And, part of, and then the follow-on from that is yeah. why. Um, it's a lot more convenient if you don't have to travel somewhere to see a doctor. But the model of care is not just about seeing the doctor. Right. It's not just uh, come in the office, we examine you, we'll give you a prescription, we'll see you again right. in six months. Right. The model of care is an integrated multidisciplinary um, care in which a, a treatment program is designed that is holistic right. um, and takes into account the family's needs and the child's needs. Um, so medication is part of that, but so is education, so is physiotherapy, so is occupational therapy, um, so is taking into account uh, emotions and, and those kinds of things. Yeah. So. I'd say the model of care really, um, uh, we, I, I, I like to tease some of my adult colleagues and say, like, you guys are just working on that now. <laughs> We've been doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think a lot of adult rheumatology and allied health professionals do look to pediatrics yeah. and say, yeah. That, yeah, that's a good model of care. Is that a um, new thing? Are they now? No. They've been um, doing, they've been looking so over gonna, your fence, stealing gonna, from you? I'm going to toot the horn of... Uh, of one of my mentors, okay. Dr. Petty. Fantastic. Um, because I think uh, Dr. Ross Petty was one of the first trained pediatric rheumatologists in Canada, wow. started one of the first pediatric rheumatology services in Vancouver, and really established a team yeah. there, yeah. which, and then trained many people who now run various teams across yeah. the country. Yeah. So I think this has been going on for quite a long time. Yeah. If you so considering that, I like that uh, word holistic. It also has to be responsive, yeah. right? So a model can't just be plunked down on a table yeah. and say, here it is. So with that, as a preamble to my question, um, what is it about a model of, a model of care, models of care that are currently in use in Canada for pediatric rheumatologists and their patients and parents? What do you see, where can we tinker? Where can we, are there improvements that can be made? Um, I think there really are, and, and there certainly have been changes over the years. Yes. Um, for example, I think physiotherapist and occupational therapy for kids with arthritis has, has changed. Yeah. Um, as our treatments become better, um, we look more towards wellness and full participation rather yeah. than 
the old days when we were hoping to just stretch out everyone's joints. Yeah. Um, I think there are some things that could be improved, and uh, you know, some of these things are things that our patients are telling us. Um, so I think uh, we have a gap where it comes to uh, mental health services for right. kids with arthritis and other rheumatic diseases. Okay. Um, and that's partly due to availability, or, uh, but I think that's something that could be addressed um, and we could work on that in some really more effective ways. Heads up, Cassie and Friends, our advocacy workshop next week. Maybe we've got a topic to yes. discuss. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, and um, I do think we are, um, uh, we are moving towards better engagement of families yeah. uh, into the process, not just I come to my appointment and I find out what's going on with my kid, but more into the process of, you know, how is care being given. Yeah. Um, so I, I think there are things, there are always things we can improve For on. For sure. New things. For sure. Um, well, I'm just going to uh, look at our producer, Anita Chan, and ask her, Anita, are there any questions from our audience? Uh, you guys mentioned that it takes a village for a psychologist, physical, physical therapist, the doctor, the room. So do these different specialists actually all meet together with the patient and the parent? Um, so at least in Vancouver, in our clinic, they do. So it's, uh, I would like to call it one-stop shopping. Yeah. <laughs> so um, when, and it means that the visit may be longer than yeah. a traditional medical visit, but at that time, uh, the child and the parents are seen by the doctor. Um, the nurse often spends a fair amount of time yeah. with education and finances and things, and then they also see the physiotherapist, occupational therapist, social worker the same day, as well as participate in research. Would that be like a first visit or every visit? Um, every visit. As needed. As needed. So, okay. I would say, and I would say the um, the sort of penultimate, fantastic, out, <laughs> like kind of super clinic. califragilistic well, expialidocious. So one of the things we've done um, in Vancouver, and I know in other centers they have these kind of combined clinics. So for kids with lupus who can have kidney problems, um, we have a combined clinic with the kidney doctors. Oh. So actually, they come to the clinic, the family. They're seen by both doctors. We talk, and then we go in together, and we talk to the family about what the coordinated plan is. So um, it saves the family an extra visit. To well, just hospital. imagine all the running back and forth. But it's also like the doctors, like we're talking together, so the parents not caught in a crossfire of two teams that are yeah. maybe saying the same thing but in different Cross words. Talk. And yeah. so that kind of model. Um, and I know in other centers at sick kids they do that. Yeah. I think in Calgary they have a clinic like that. Yeah. I think that kind of model is really um, fantastic and, and responsive. As you Great said, if it's care. if it's as needed, you you don't have maybe everybody in that one room at one time, yeah. but probably in the beginning yeah. until you get the child stabilized and normalized, um, and parents too in that process. Um, maybe m more of those team members in the locker room, and then. You know, yep. when the day goes on and things are getting better, fewer yep. of them. So yep. that's what I like about this model of care is that it, it's, it is responsive, yep. um, but still remembers that there's a whole big picture around a child yeah. to get them on their way. Yeah. So, um, Anita, any other questions for now? Uh, so for some concerned parents, they're concerned that their kids might miss school. In terms of uh, arthritis, uh, how often do you find kids missing school? Like, would you tell the parents it's approximately once a week they would miss school? Oh gosh, no. Yeah. Um, you know, we're obviously as concerned about that as, as parents are. Um, uh, when, we, when kids are first diagnosed with arthritis, they might uh, have a visit, they might come back in a month or eight weeks, you know, um, until things are s stabilized. After that, when things are stable, uh, many of our patients are coming every three months for a clinic visit. Um, something that does take extra time for some patients is some children are on biologic right. infusions right. That's a that do of require hours, yeah. coming every two weeks to the hospital yeah. or once a month. So that's a bit of additional um, time. However, um, the benefit our occupational therapist works with schools. Um, 
to try and address any issues that come up around missing um, yeah. school. Yeah. Um, so in general, it's not a major problem for kids. They're mm -hmm. not hospitalized. Like I suspect in the in days. the old days, they probably were. Their kids hospitalized. Yeah. But, you know, we don't do that very much. Anymore. Yeah. Which is really encouraging yeah. news. Um, we're going to have to although we don't want to, let um, Dr. Lori Tucker go uh, back to her meeting and, and with her colleagues um, to advance the field of pediatric rheumatology, and we thank her so much, Lori. You're always stellar. You're always fascinating to talk to. We could do this for hours. Let's yeah. do it back in our hometown yeah. over coffee soon. Um, we want to thank our viewers for being with us. We remind you this will continue to remain on the, on the Facebook um, page of our Threadist Broadcast Network. Please continue to send your questions and comments um, and applause. Everybody put their hands together for Dr. Lord. Tucker.